Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. Let's see the next concept that is mass spectrometry. We all know that organic spectroscopy is one of the interesting subject in organic chemistry. Right? In general, in organic spectroscopy, we will be having four important units. Those are ultraviolet visible spectroscopy, infrared spectroscopy, NMR spectroscopy, and mass spectrometry. So this will be the last unit, mass spectrometry. These three are what? Spectroscopic techniques. But this one is spectrometry. What is the difference between spectroscopy and spectrometry? We all know that electromagnetic radiation. If the unknown sample is interacted with electromagnetic radiation, then that is commonly called as spectroscopy. In spectroscopy, we are having different kinds of interactions of the electromagnetic radiations with different kinds of the unknown samples. In case of UV visible spectroscopy, we are interacting with UV visible light. In case of IR spectroscopy, we are interacting with infrared light. In case of NMR spectroscopy, we are interacting with radio waves. So in that way, we are going to get the information related to the structure of the compound. Right? But in case of the spectrometry, what we are doing, we are using high energetic electron beam. By the passage of high energy electron beam, we are going to get some information related to the structure of organic molecules. In case of any spectroscopic technique or any spectrometric technique, the first and fundamental point is general principle. The principle is very, very, very important uh, for each and every kind of the spectroscopic and spectrometric technique. So, whenever you have the knowledge of the basic principle of spectroscopic and spectrometric techniques, then only you are going to be able to understand the different concepts which are present in the particular area. Okay, let's see the general principle of mass spectrometry. What is the main aim of the mass spectrometry? The mass spectrometry is useful to determine the molecular weight and molecular formula of an organic compound. The second one, whenever we are having different kinds of the heteroatoms in a particular organic compound, we can be able to identify by using the mass spectrometry. The third one is what? Small species, ethyl, methyl, propyl, cyanide group, these kind of simple species can be easily identified by using the mass spectrometry. So whenever you identify the different kinds of the simple species, so indirectly what we are going to identify that is what tentative carbon skeleton of the particular molecule or the particular compound. So these are the very very important points of mass spectrometry. What is the first one? Determination of molecular weight and molecular formulae, identification of heteroatoms, identification of simple species, thereby we are going to identify tentative carbon skeleton in the organic molecule. Okay, so now we are having one unknown sample. Assume that we have one unknown sample that is represented with M, capital M. In mass spectrometry, what we need to understand, the sample must be in the vapor state, in gaseous state. Then only the sample can be analyzed by using the mass spectrometry. So initially, we have an unknown sample. The unknown sample is present in the what? Vapor state. Okay. Now what we are doing, we are sending an electron beam of energy with 70 electron volts. If you send this much amount of energy, what will happen? The removal of electrons takes place from this particular sample. Thereby, we are creating positively charged radical, commonly called as radical cation. This is also called as molecular ion. So, whatever the molecular ion is formed here, that is further subjected to different kinds of the cleavages. The process is commonly called as fragmentation, the cleavage of molecular ion. 
the fragmentation process leads to the simple simple spaces commonly called as fragments the fragments may be neutral in nature it may be radical cation it may be a simple cation it may be a radical or it may be a anion negatively charged particle but we need to remember the mass spectrometry only identifies positively charged species it means that what the molecular ion can be identified by the mass spectra and also the radical cation and cation so the mass instrument recognizes only positively charged particles and positively charged with radical character that can be easily identified by the mass spectrometry okay if you see the general principle initially what we are doing the electron beam is bombarded with the unknown sample if you bombard the electron beam with the unknown sample initially what is happening the removal of a single electron from the sample takes place that is going to produce as what a molecular ion already we know that each and every organic molecule contains even number of electrons so let us assume that the m containing two electrons from the two electrons uh, we are removing one particular electron thereby we are creating positive charge and second electron will be present that is the what molecular ion generally we need to send this much amount of energy but in order to produce the molecular ion the energy needed is 7 to 12 electron volts this is very very important point the energy needed to remove a single electron to form the molecular ion is what 7 to 12 electron volts the remaining energy is useful for the fragmentation process so during the fragmentation what is happening you will get different kinds of the species simply if you observe the general principle of mass spectrometry we have a unknown sample that is present in the vapor state that is going to bombarded with high energy electron beam the high energy electron beam initially producing a molecular ion by the removal of a single electron that can subjected to the further cleavage that is commonly called as fragmentation process during the fragmentation process we are going to get different kinds of the species but the mass spectra mass spectrum instrument is going to analyze only positively charged species molecular ion simple cation and radical cations after the fragmentation whatever the species we are getting their molecular weights are lesser than the radical cation or molecular ion why because we are cleaving the molecular ion because of that reason the molecular weight of the formed species are going to be very smaller in nature comparing with the molecular ion let us see the situation this is the sample the sample is going to have some molecular weight or not right from this molecular weight what we are doing we are removing initially an electron or not by the removal of an electron there is no effect on the molecular weight of the substance that's why the molecular weight of the sample and the molecular weight of the molecular ion both will be always same why because the mass instrument identify different kinds of positively charged species by using mass by charge ratio so we have removed a single electron so mass by charge of electron is very lesser that's why molecular weight by charge is going to give a molecular weight only so always if you know the molecular weight of the molecular ion it means that what indirectly we are knowing the molecular weight of your unknown sample right always we are going to observe the molecular weights based on the mass by charge ratio it may be represented by m by z or m by e in some of the textbooks people are showing m by z in some textbooks it is represented with m by e both are same okay here we have a term called as multiply charged ions initially what happened here 
From the sample, we have removed a single electron, thereby we are creating a molecular ion with unique positive charge. There may be a chance by supplying this much amount of energy, more than one electron can be removed. Then such type of ions are commonly called as a, what? Multiply charged ion. This is specially observed in case of the n heterocyclic compounds. Right, see this one. This is the molecular ion. We have given the energy. Two electrons are removed. That's why it is represented with what? Two positive charges. So, the example is pyridine. From the pyridine, if you subject this kind of situation, what is happening? Two lone pair electrons are removed and produces double plus. Right? These kind of ions are commonly called as what? Multiply charged ions. So, this is the what? Simple basic principle of your mass spectrometry. Right? Let's see one example. See this one? This is the benzene. If you want to analyze the benzene with mass spectral instrument, what kind of information we will get? So, initially we have molecule. These electrons are what? Even in number. That's why what we are doing? Initially, we are supplying 70, 7 to 12 electron volts of energy. Thereby, what happens? A removal of single electron takes place. That's why, see this one, from this pi bond, we have removed an electron. That's why it can be represented with plus radical. It can be represented with M plus radical. It can also be represented in this way. M and this kind of sign with plus radical. Already we know that the molecular weight of benzene is what? 78 or not? From this molecular weight, we have removed an electron. That's why there is no change in the mass of the substance or not. That's why what is happening? The m by z value is always what? 78. Why? Because m value is 78. Mass 78 by electron charge. That is 1. So, 78 by 1 equal to again 78. It means that what? If the mass instrument recognizes the molecular ion of the benzene, it means that what? Indirectly, we are determining the molecular weight of your substance, your benzene. Right? So, this one is subjected to what? Fragmentation. Fragmentation means what? Different kinds of the cleavages. So, during the cleavage, see this one. We are getting positively charged ion, neutral molecule, radical, Positively charged ion and positively charged ion. This positively charged ion mass by charge ratio 51. This one is 77. This one is 79. Already we know that mass instrument identifies only positively charged species. It means that what? It cannot be identified. It cannot be identified. If you see the mass spectra of this particular molecule, the mass spectra is always, it is a plot between mass by charge versus intensity of the peaks. So, m by z value we are uh, having in the x axis, intensity in the y axis. This left side region is the what? Lower m by z. The right side is the what? Higher m by z. Right? So, initially we are having what? Molecular ion of the benzene or not? The molecular ion of the benzene is appears at what? 78, then 77, then 51 and then 13. So, in this way, we are going to observe the mass spectra of any kind of the compound. So, these smaller line indicates what? The fragment ion peaks. This one indicates molecular ion peak. What is the fragmentation process? How can we fragment different kinds of the molecular ions? That will be discussed in the next classes. Right? So, this is simply the principle of your mass spectrometry. Okay. But if you see the limitations, the first limitation is what? Sample should be in vapor state. Whenever you have an unknown sample, if you want to identify or determine the molecular weight or molecular formula of that particular compound, that compound should be in which state? Vapor state. If you have the solid or if you have the liquid, these compounds can be initially converted into vapor state. This is the first limitation. The second one is 
controlled energy transfer see this one for the generation of the molecular ion 7 to 12 electron volts of energy is needed for the fragmentation process 70 electron volts energy is needed if you said more than this much amount of energy you will not get anything that's why the second limitation is what controlled energy transfer the third limitation is what sample cannot be recovered this is the problem with the mass spectrometry why because for the chemist the sample is very precious or not but we need to get the information also right by using the mass spectrometry what is happening whatever the sample you are having that is subjected to simple 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 fragmentations or not it means at the end of the procedure you do not have the sample you have only ions simple ions it means that what you cannot recover your sample so these are the few limitations of mass spectrometry so this is the fundamental introduction of your mass spectrometry so in the coming lectures we will identify different kinds of the topics which are related to the mass spectrometry in a very 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 easy manner you all should remember one thing if you are the expert in organic spectroscopy in case of the net examination you are going to have minimum 10 marks in your G. okay please follow my lectures i'm going to cover initially mass spectrometry followed by these three techniques if you are having the complete data of these particular four units I am assuring you, you can easily do the combined problems. If you have the data of these particular four units, by using the data, you can easily deduce the structure of your organic compounds. So, by the ending of the course, you are going to get the complete knowledge. We are going to finish this particular organic spectroscopy complete subject within three to four months. So, kindly follow all my lectures thereby you will get complete information related to the organic spectroscopy so all the best so this is what the introduction portion of your mass spectrometry